Jojolapa, Namaste, Good Morning, and Good Evening. This is Pramesh, your host of the EW. So I would like to welcome all of you. And as we have uh, spoken earlier, that right from today, that we are starting the Nepal Bhasa language. And I have our resource person who has been in this field since 1992, uh, Mr. Daya Sakya, who is linguist by profession. And uh, he has been uh, in this field, not only uh, teaching the Nepal Bhasa, but even the Nepali and as well as Sanskrit. So let me just invite uh, Mr. Sakya so that we can just start the program. Jojalapa, that's with Mr. Sakya. Jojalapa, good morning, good evening, namaste for everybody. Thank you for arranging this program through um, E Double. I really appreciate. Uh, promote uh, promise uh, initiative for recording having this session um, through the EW program. So I'm here to give you some lessons on as I put in my promo uh, clip. So I'm here to give you the first lesson starting from today. So first of all, when we talk about Nepal Bhasa, Actually, I need to give you some historical background so that you will understand then why this language is called Nepal Vasa or why it should not be called by somebody something else. Actually, the language we call Nepal Vasa is the language only spoken in Nepal. So that's why we call Nepal Vasa. The historical name of the language who is spoken by Nepal people is called Nepal Vasa, but in the long run, in a historical aspect, some people started using Newari as a term given by the Westerners and also used by the people who do not speak Nepal Vasa. So once they started using the word Newari by other people, and the Newari people also started using the same term Newari, so probably you know they do not know exactly why it is not appropriate to use Newari, so that's why they started using Newari also. So historically, the name of the language we are talking about here is Nepal Vasa and only spoken in Nepal. Now, these days, the Newar people are not only living in Nepal Mandala or in Kathmandu Valley, uh, Bhaktapur, Kathmandu, and Lalitpur, and some other surrounding villages in Kathmandu. They are also spread out in the 61 districts all over in seven, out of 75 districts. So this is kind of a spreading out not only in Kathmandu, also in all over Nepal. Now, these days in the 21st century, the people who are not only living in Nepal and also spread out everywhere around the world. So per, from our uh, resources that it is kind of like a given us the data that Nepal people are spread out in 130 the different countries. All of them who migrated or who started living outside Nepal they do not learn, they do not know, they do not uh, know the idea of you know, how the language can be learned, or they do not know why it is important. So this EW program is very, very uh, effective, probably. So probably, and they can learn or they can understand why this language is important. So having said that, I mean, Nepal Vasa, if you look at the historical document or historical monuments, if you look at into the oldest one, we can find in Nepal some about 235 years, 235 years. So that means almost like a 900 years document we can find in historical background. So something like that, because this is the oldest language and it used to be the official language of Nepal until the Rana period at probably around the Chandra Samshir time. So until that time, it was the official language of Nepal. And after that, the Bahalu of Nepal was a kind of a diminished and then so take over by another language, which is we call these days the vernacular, the vernacular language we use in Nepal and also uh, use as an official language in Nepal. From that time, the importance of this language is kind of a, went down a little bit. And then the people also started not paying attention as needed. So this language has been uh, demonized in a different way. So now the people have kind of a, it's like a revival stage is coming up because not knowing the language and also their identity is kind of like a, 
uh, not known by the many people. So once they start learning the own language, I think they will also know how important the language needs to be survived. So giving this background, probably uh, now you understand why this language is so important for us. As a Newa people of Nepal, we definitely need to know the language. So in, in order to learn this language, definitely we have to come up with some, um, some knowledge of the language, how to learn. So basically when the people are learning the language, even though it is a mother tongue of your own language or the ethnic language, but if you start learning the other language as a further language, so now some people probably learning this language as a second language, even though the first language is the mother language, but some people probably have learned that other than Nepal Vasa. So now Nepal Vasa has become a second language for those people. So definitely this kind of a uh, situation right now we are facing, hopefully those who are listening to this uh, lesson, hopefully somebody who are you know, watching this video and this uh, YouTube, so you can get a benefit from this lesson. We will be doing this lesson for six different um, episodes. So first episode today, uh, today is uh, July 8th. So the next one will be two weeks from today. That will be on July 22nd. So July 22nd and also the next one will be on August 5th. So that means on every single episode, so I will be focusing on the different subject matter. It may be cover up, cover up for only for the needed for that day. So it will be for, if we have to go in a step by step, probably it will be easy to learn in a very easy way, very easy method. So I'm giving you some lessons that hopefully you all will benefit from this lesson. Please join me in looking at the uh, the some of the features of Nepal Vasa. So, Pramesh ji, do you have any question before I move yes. into the actual program? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Sakya. So, I really, yes, thank you so much for elaborating, yes, the background of the Nepal Vasa. And yes, uh, so how it is different. I mean, so, on the due course of yes, this lesson, definitely, yes, we will be yes, uh, identifying that. So, uh, how would you like to start with or in this sixth episode of this uh, this classes? So basically, yes, what would be the, uh, the subject matters that we will be touching? So especially, yes, are we focusing how to yes, speak uh, the language or yes, are you just giving us some idea how to teach somebody else how to speak the language? Yeah, basically, so starting from today, what I'm going to focus on the very first episode, so I will be just giving you some of the very simple sentences. So when those simple sentences are analyzed into a sound system so that you can know that how the sound system is uh, you know, established in Nepal Vasa. So that way, first would be uh, some of the sentences I have in my book, so I will read out in a few minutes. And then Every single, every single language has a, its own sound system. The sound system starting from the vowel first. The vowel is a kind of like a, you know, uh, it has to have a, you know, without vowel, there's no language. There has to, even the vowel by itself it can be a word. So same way in, in Nepal Vasa also, there are many, many vowels. For example, in the basic vowels are the six vowels. So each of the, those six vowels can be, if it is pronounced just like a one vowel, it can become a, become a word. For example, I say just like a I, or in English, um, uh, Romanized letter I, it is pronounced as E. So E by itself is a one word in the Palvaza. Same way A is another one, is also as a uh, one word, because A means right now, and E means like uh, the time. So these are the kind of a very unique feature in the Palvaza. Probably this kind of a feature may not be available in other languages, but if you are listening to this uh, E and A kind of a sound, if you look at into the same sound is used in your language where you are reciting right now around the world, probably in African countries or in the, some other European countries where the different language is spoken. If you compare with the people who speak this language, their language, and compare with the E and A, if that come into like a word or it has some meaning, so that is a very much similar feature from Nepal Vasa and the language spoken, you know, it was spoken in that area. So this kind of feature is very, very, uh, unique in some of the languages. So some languages have their own feature 
and some languages it has a similarity with the other languages. So these features are very uh, important for people who learn the second language. So now we are teaching as a Nepal Bhasa as a second language for those who don't mm. do not speak uh, do not speak Nepal Bhasa or they speak only other than Nepal Bhasa. So if their mother tongue is other than Nepal Bhasa, the Nepal Bhasa has become a second language for them. So in order to learn the second language. There is some kind of, you know, uh, you need to have some kind of interest. If the lecture I am giving you right now has no interest on you, probably you may not be able to learn the language, but you need to show the interest first so that it will be, you know. So first of all, we we start from the uh, introduction and greetings. So when we do the introduction and greeting, first of all, every language has a way of saying introductory. It's like, a, um, for example, I have some... Uh, Words. So we say Namaste or Jodhalapa because the word Jodhalapa kind of established before it was only we call Namaste. Now we started saying Jodhalapa. Jodhalapa is a word that means Jodhalapa. That means Jo is a pair and La is a hand. So two hands together means Jodhalapa. So this is a very old, like classical Nepalvasa. It was borrowed from the classical Nepalvasa. Now it has been revive into the modern Nepal Bhasa. So this is how we started. The another word, I mean, sentence we do in the introduction and greetings, Chigu Nan Chu. Chigu Nan Chu. So that's the one with, uh, what is your name? Chigu Nan Chu is, what is your name? So when you say the name and the person who is, you know, speaking and he's going to start saying something like, Chigu Nan Timilaka. I have a lesson uh, in my book. So I'm using the book which is I'm, I already wrote by myself. So this is the book I'm using right now. So that means if this book is um, kind of a beneficial for you, you can send us an email at the drasa at aol.com or also it can be sent to promise.sresta at hotmail.com. If you drop an email in one of these email addresses, so we will respond to you in a cons uh, uh, subsequently and also in a uh, simultaneous so if you have any questions. So you can also get the book from the uh, from the bookstore and also in Kathmandu. I have a bookstore. This book is available. If not available in Kathmandu, we can also mail to you. So this is the facility I'm giving you for you to learn Nepal Vaza. So in terms of language uh, introduction and greetings, I have another word what we use normally. Where is your house? So this is what in a regular way we say. And the other one is Yele Mangal Bazare. When somebody is asking Chigu Chengkana, that means definitely you mean, to, you mean to say that where you live and then you give the address. So just giving an address, it does not go like, a, you don't need to give a specific address, but when you say somebody Chigu Chengkana, I live in a Patan, I live in Kathmandu, I live in somewhere. So those kind of you know, common uh, sentences, common uh, you know, responses you can find in Nepal Vasa. The other one we also say, so, when somebody says Chigu Chengana, Chigu is a word that's played respective or maybe in a non honorific way, Chengu Chengana. So Chengu and Chigu, those are two words used for the second person pronoun. And then one is kind of like a not respectable or like a regularly you can use with your friends. And also Chigu is more like a respectable. So those kind of a differences you find in a pronoun using the pronouns. As well as Chigana Chagule. So when somebody asking, where are you heading? Where are you going? So instead of saying, cha gana wani gule, and also cha chi gana cha gule. So cha and chi are the two different pronouns used for second person. So those are very, very unique. Uh, so we can use them. And ji ta chen wani go. So the response for that chi gana cha gule, the response is ji ta chen wani go. If it is a question is you ask to a woman who is already married, so when seeing her on the roadside and then asking Chigana Chagu, Ji Ta Chen Wanegu, Ta Chen is the own parents' house. Not the house where she lives with the husband, but the parents' house. The next one, Chike Ghari Dula. So Chike Ghari Dula, that means do you have a watch or do you carry a watch? So Chike Ghari Dula. Dula is a question word. Do is a yes. Uh, is or like a la is a question word in Nepal, Nepal Vasa. When you add something in a sentence and then add la at the very end, so that la becomes the question word, question sentence in Nepal Vasa. For example, in English, do I have a pen with me? So you have to use the verb at the beginning of the sentence. I have a pen. Do I have a pen? So those kind of differences in English, but in Nepal Vasa, 
So the question uh, particle is called a la is a particle. Particle is used at the very end. So that's called the self, uh, question sentence. And there is also a question word. If the question word is used, the la is not not necessary to use at the end of the sentence. So I have been talking. So probably Promesi, if you have any questions, so while we are talking, maybe that may that will be more uh, beneficial for the listener. So let's let's. Uh, what do you think about what I just said that right now? Yeah, this is really informative, and since yes, I know the language, so uh, it is really it is easier for me. But but if we are focusing yes to the one who doesn't understand anything about Nepal Basa or who doesn't know anything about Nepal Basa, so the way that you are giving the introduction that's really beneficial, I think so. So please yes, carry on. Yeah, so I just mentioned earlier that the chike gari dula. So just slowly, if you listen the word sentence, chike gari dula. So chi and ke and gari and du and la. So each and every sound has a meaning on the sentence. It's not something like chike has a two different, uh, uh, one is chi and then ke. Ke is another you know, grammatical subject, grammatical uh, information is there. So same way, and then the person who says, if the person has a watch, he says a do. So he says a do, do, it means I have. So the have or do is a kind of a similar, but when somebody is possess, uh, possess or own, own a watch. So that's why do. If something, to garikala, that doesn't mean that it's a do is appropriate here. To garikala, is this a watch? So in Nepal, Vasa, we need to remember that there are two different kinds of, we call the, and the is bar is used in a two different way. One is with the do and other one with the ka. So difference between ka and do, the ka is like equalizing, like a declarative. Is this a watch for, for kala? Do you have watch? So dula and then kala are the two different, uh, two different um, words. So those words are used in English as only is, but in Nepal Vasa, we have to have a two different words. One is for declaring or describing, and other one for locating. If somebody says chike gari dula, the gari is located with somebody. So that's why it has to be located with somebody, and then we have to we call dula. This is a very simple you know, analysis. So if you are speaking with the, not just the English and also Nepali language, they are also two different ways of saying. Ho and then cha. So it's a very similar way to describe ho and cha in Nepal Vasa is do and then ka. So same way I have another sentence is a guli baje jula le a. So guli baje jula means what time is right now. So guli baje jula. I think it is very simple to say that. If you memorize this sentence, guli baje jula. If you keep saying fast and guli baje jula, guli baje jula. So Nepal Vasa is a sort of mono tonic language, it has a monosyllabic uh, language. Every single sound has a meaning. This is the feature of Nepal Vasa. Wuli, Baje, Jula, La. La is a question, uh, question, uh, question word, question particle. A is a like a right now. A no Baje, Jula. So right now is nine o'clock. And then, as a boss, Waina, Dri, Wane, Ne. So boss, Waina, Dri, Wane, Ne. So it has a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The last one is ne. It's okay. It's time for me to go. It's already nine o'clock. So it's time for me to go. So this is how simply we can analyze the each and every sentence we use in a daily life. Once you understand the sentence, once you understand the meaning of the sentence, once you understand the sound system of the sentence, then you are ready to go for learning this language. It's very simple. But you have to keep in mind that the interest is uh, one of the most dynamic force for you to learn this language. If you have no interest, you are just listening to my voice and that doesn't help you to learn. That's why I'm asking you, I'm requesting you, I'm kind of urging you that please pay attention and then also try to write something if you do understand. So when I write, I also write in Devanagari as well as also in a Romanized script. So Romanized script it for me is very easy to transcribe all the words in Nepal Vasa because it gives more detailed information. Whereas in Devanagari, it is very hard to differentiate from vowels and consonants unless it is a separate word because the consonants in Devanagari script is already embedded 
but when you use the romanized romanized uh, alphabet it's easy to uh, differentiate whether it is a consonant or the vowel is combined together or separated together that can be analyzed in a very simple way the last sentence in terms of you know introduction and greetings i have kasaka dipanapalaka see the sentence is very simple kasaka dipanapalaka so kasaka dipanapalaka means okay i will see you later so this is a very simple way of saying kasaka ne dipanapala so means i will see you later or i will meet you later so instead of saying i will see you so in war in nepal wasa we call kasaka dipanapala so analyzing these like a uh, 12 sentences i have used the consonants there are many many consonants for example if you look at the devanagari script so devanagari is written in nepal wasa also and also in for nepali language also in hindi and also in sanskrit so this devanagari script is used for writing many many indian languages i mean indian means not only just the language spoken in nepal but the indo aryan languages so most of the indo aryan languages are written in uh, devanagari script so sometimes also pali is also used uh, pali also adopted the devanagari script to in the, write the pali language same way when i look at the uh, nepal bhasha vowels and consonants so there are six different vowels in uh, nepal bhasha for example i can give you some examples uh, like a o a e a o and u so six if you can write it down o a e a o and u so these are the six basic vowels in nepal bhasha we use all the time not like o a e u u a e o o on o not that way because the basic so, vowels in nepalasa are only six vowels do you have any question yeah in roman so we have like uh, five uh, vowels yes so so what is the difference i mean in between these roman vowels and this in nepal bhasha so in terms of the sound i yes, mean yes i um, you know in english or roman a e i o u are the five vowels are considered five sounds are considered as a vowels in romanized romanized script but whereas in same vowels are used for different kind of you know pronunciation in english words but in nepal bhasha what we have to do is uh, there are prescribed well there are 12 different vowels in you know nepal bhasha but those 12 vowels are derived from the sanskrit language derived from the other languages like a uh, nepali or hindi some other language but how it is being you know analyzed these days analyzed in a modern linguistic way there are six vowels only because the six vowels are the basic vowels and they have a modified or secondary feature for example a and a are the two basic vowels and then e and a and then o and u are the additional you know four vowels so all together they are a a e a o u so a and a in a romanized way you have to differentiate between regular a so a is very similar like a b u t but that's a in sound for a the same a or you have to put either the bar on top of a that is pronounced as a or i usually sometimes write in a capital a for a and a regular small a for a small a for a so this differentiation is kind of like a little bit difficult at the beginning but once you start having a habit of you know teaching or a habit of learning so you will easily remember that a and a is a two different vowels so a is very similar in english as a calm k a l m the word calm the sound of a in calm is the a the word b u t pronounced as a but the a in the u a in the u is pronounced as a so that's the difference between a and a and the other one is e so we write in romanized form is i but it's not a i it's a e and then we have a a so a like a e in romanized form but the pronunciation is like a a and then other one is o and u so o and u is very very simple so it's not there is no you know confusion on that all these six vowels are pronounced in a long form so this is the very specific the nepal bhasha feature of nepal you know because all the vowels can be long all the vowels are 
and pronounced by nose. So that is called nasalized vowels. So nasalized vowels and the, being a lengthy, so there are three different way of pronouncing the vowels. One is regular vowels, second one is nasalized vowels, and third one is a lengthy vowels. So when I say lengthy vowels, what does it mean is that there are some words, I can give you some examples. So Nepal Vasa vowels are kind of like a pronounced in a short way and a long way. The example what I have right now is a, there's a word called tashi. So tashi means, uh, you know, when in a, in a wall, you put something on top, like a flag. That's the tashi. And if the ta is pronounced in a long way, that's a ta shi. So ta shi and ta shi are the two different sounds. One is long, one is short. So ta shi means a kind of a, a fruit used only in swanti or used only in the uh, nuda, uh, uh, like a mapuza. I think you remember when you were in Kathmandu or in Nepal. So we use a, it's called in Nepal, it's called the bimira. So bimira is called the ta shi in Nepal Vasa. So that's why the toshi and toshi is a very simple in you know, a difference is one is short and one is long. Same way, we also have a, a she. So I, she is like a, uh, what's called a lice. And then if you call it's a long way, it's a she, that means the wax. So she and she, one is short or one is long. So those are the difference here. You can, all the vowels are short and then long, pronounced in a very clearly. Unless you can figure out difference between the short and long vowel, sometimes it is very difficult for you to understand the Nepal Vasa word. That's why a lot of people are not encouraged to learn, oh, the Nepal Vasa is very, very difficult. I say Nepal Vasa is very simple, but English is very difficult to learn because every single word in Nepal Vasa is pronounced in a different way, even though the same vowel or same letter is used. So I would say English is the difficult language, not the Nepal Vasa. If you you know, take my word, Nepal Vasa is simple to learn, but English is difficult to learn. Once you are start learning English language from the very childhood, then English is very simple for you. But now, in this age, probably you are maybe teenager or maybe adult or somebody. So now you are learning Nepal Vasa as a second language, but you might say that Nepal Vasa is a difficult language to learn. That's not how it is. No, it's not. It's not true. Mm. So this is what is all about in the vowel system because there are six vowels, so they can be nasalized, they can be long, and the last feature of the balwasa vowels are they can be long and short. For example, on. If you say just the on and then on, so on is mango. On has no meaning. A on has a sort sort of you know very uh, little meaning, but when you say on, on means mango. So how do you write in Devanagari script? You only say A uh, and then Chandra Bindu and then long vowel with the two dots. That is called semicolon in English uh, alphabet or it is called Bisarga in Nepal Vasa or it is borrowed from uh, borrowed from Sanskrit called Bisarga. So if you start using, when you read Nepal Vasa, you will find lots and lots of Bisarga because this is how it is. This is how it is. In one of the last session of our episode, I will be discussing about how to write Nepal Vasa in a Devanagari or in a Romanized way. So that is my the last uh, uh, aim to teach you how to write Nepal Vasa. Just mention that I have, you know, Nepal Vasa word, the vowels can be uh, nasalized. I just said that, a uh and a, uh, ga and ga. So ga means well, ga is like a dry. So dry is short vowel, the gong is a long vowel. Gong is bell, gong is dry. So this is kind of difference between is very, very common in most of the uh, the vocabulary in Nepal Vasa. So probably if you pay attention now on when somebody is speaking Nepal Vasa, you might be, on, you know, uh, you might be hitting this, you know, very right place that, you know, Nepal Vasa has a difference between the long vowel, the short vowel, the long and short, nasal and no nasal. So if it is pronounced by no nose, that is called nasal sound. If it is pronounced with a long and short, that's called the vowel length. Vowel length is a special feature in Nepal Vasa and also nasal and no nasal is also a special feature in Nepal Vasa. So when we talk about this sound system, it might be hectic for you to understand, but probably these are the basic features you must understand at the very beginning of the you know, very beginning of the lesson. If you understand all these lessons, because this is going to be transcribed in uh, DVD in the long, down the road, 
So if you just listen to the um, this lecture, what I'm just talking to you, so it will be beneficial for down, you know, for for the people who want to learn the language in the future. Now the second feature, what I'm going to, you know, uh, give you some lessons on the concept English were already included in Oxford University Dictionary. So same way we borrow lots and lots of. Now the Nepal Vasa, we borrow lots and lots of Sanskrit words. And probably we do not know whether the, it is a Sanskrit or completely or really a Nepal Vasa word. It's very difficult to analyze these. But a person like me as a linguist, so we know how the difference between the word we use in Nepal Vasa is come from Sanskrit or some of the languages or the language it originated from by itself. So there are some special features in Nepal Vasa. I think this will be very beneficial for you to understand the sound system. Now look at some another uh, sentences. What we have just uh, I just read earlier. So there are some common questions in Nepal Vasa. So I have written this in my book, page number four. So there are some questions I'm going to read and how it is, you know, uh, differentiated from the each sentence. It has some uh, basic words. For example, the first one is eh, bhai, so I think you can say that, right? Eh, bhai, is that kind of difficult for you to say? Eh, bhai, so I use the word bhai. That doesn't mean that the word is borrowed from Nepali. Because we also say dai and bhai. Instead of saying kiza, but people also say in addressing we call eh, bhai, the bhai is also borrowed from different language. But sometimes, you know, we call dai. Sometimes we say dazu. So dazu and dai kind of a synonyms to the same word. It's an older brother. And then bhai is also used in. So when I say bhai is borrowed from other language, but in a practical way, the language has to be practical. So when I say practical, how it is being used in a day-to-day -day life, not just the focusing on the dictionary. So dictionary might be say, if you look at the word brother, B-R-O-T-H-E-R, brother, in dictionary, you will find the word kiza. But in practical way, we also use bhai. So those kind of words are practical. So my focus is basically on the practical use of the language, not just by focusing on the grammar, not by just focusing on the what is being given in the dictionary, but how it is needs to be practical in a daily life so that it will be very easy for you to understand, not just focusing on only original Nepal Vasa word, because nobody speak English language only written in English, because the, some of the words in English language also came from Latin and Greek. So if there was no Latin, if there was no Greek, and there's no English language. Same way, in, there's no Sanskrit or some other Indian languages, Nepal Vasa also borrowed lots and lots of words from Sanskrit. Chi gono chona diago. Now I'm using a very you know, honorific way. Chi gono chona diago. The next one, taxi gono kayago dai. These are all common words. They are all common sentences you can use in a daily life when you are speaking to another person with speaking only the same language. Churod gono niago dai. Chiapati gonna niago day, Chiaposa gonna do, Hotel gonna do, Swim book gonna wanna go, Bully Bajia Zula, Katmanu post, Aqua gonna niago do, Biso Vasa campus gonna do, Jean Totarkari gonna yana, Chin Totarkari gonna yana diago, Santiago ta gonna do, and Tota Tonna ta hulu jugo. So all these senses are very commonly used uh, sentences. Uh, Pramesi, do you have any questions regarding what I'm just talking about right now? Yeah. If you do understand, you know, if you don't understand, let me know because I need to, <laughs> because I'm talking by myself, Absolutely. so there yeah. may be some questions yeah. you have in your mind, sir. So these are really informative that right, you have been giving, right? Uh, so far, I think that basically today you are covering, right, uh, on the basics of the language, Nepal Vasa. So yes. uh, how it would be practical, uh, I mean, as we go along, maybe in the other classes, it will be more. Uh, it will be more uh, clear. So so far, right? I'm really enjoying the way that you have been giving the information. So please carry on. Yeah, the reason I wanted to give you some uh, sentences first because uh, once you start, you know, memorizing the sentences, and then you can analyze the words. 
And then to analyze the words, then you need to know some sound system, how it is being said. So my focus is basically, you know, first you need to listen, and then you need to produce, and then you need to understand, and then you analyze. So four different steps. First, listen, mm -hmm. how the words are put together. Then you produce yourself, whether you are able to produce the same way how it is being written. For example, I just mentioned earlier that the vowel has to be pronounced in a two different ways, short and long. The vowel has to be pronounced whether it is from the nasal or not oral. So oral vowel and nasal vowel, whether the vowel also has a long and nasal both. So long and nasal. So there are 24 different kinds of vowels are pronounced in Nepal Bhasa, which is something very different from when, what we have conventionally learned from each school, like A, A, E, E, U, U, A, A, O, 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 O. So those are the Sanskrit-based vowels. It has already secondary features. It's also already there. But in modern linguistics, the linguist people have kind of analyzed that there are only six vowels used in Nepal Vasa, and it has its secondary features altogether. There are 24 different kinds of vowels are pronounced in Nepal Vasa. So to know all these things, I think you need to learn the sentence first. When you learn the sentence, then the sentence has words. So how the words are formatted. And then the words, how they are formatted from sound into consonant and then vowel put together. So that's how the, you know, the sentence build up. So the next sentence, what I have is Sofu Pasa Guble Chai. So I'm saying that you know, if you use the word Pa and then Sa, and that is not the Nova word. That is not the Nepal Vasa word. Pa and Sa, Pasa. It had no meaning, but you need to say Pasa. So Pasa, the long vowel on the second word, is the clue of you know, Nepal Vasa feature. When you use that uh, Pasa in an oblique form, oblique form means adding a ma then possible. So this kind of a feature I will discuss in the next episode. So you will know that all the, in Nepali is called the bibakti or in English, it is called the uh, case marks. So these case marks are very important in any language. It will give you the information about who is doing what to whom. All these questions are used Express in a sentence by knowing the grammatical feature. When I go into a grammatical feature, you might be scared of knowing that. Wait a minute, I don't understand these things. But if you just pay attention on what I just said, those sentences have so many uh, grammatical features already embedded, but I'm just trying to give you some example that these sentences already have a grammatical features are there, but you just need to know. Comparing with the English language, comparing the Nepali language, compare with the Nepal Vasa. Once you compare the three different languages, then you will, oh my God, look at that, how it is simple in Nepal Vasa, whereas in different languages it's so much difficult. So this is what my, the way of teaching my own you know, Nepal Vasa language. I hope you enjoy this way. So the next sentence, what I have is a airport taka taxi bhara gulikai. So now I'm using the word taxi, right? How do we use the word taxi into Nepal Vasa? There is no way. There is no, because the taxi is a common word also used in Nepal Vasa, also in different languages. So maybe these days, you know, the Uber has been kind of, you know, coming into our, you know, modern system. So maybe instead of using a taxi, so people might start using Uber. Uber ganakaya gudai, Uber ganakaya ganawane gu, Uber awane no. So these will be applicable probably in the 21st century. So, so computer is very, very you know, uh, part of the life now. Cell phone become a part of the life. So we need to borrow the world from different languages to make it language more vibrant, make it more like a dynamic, make it more applicable and make it more, uh, you know, all different way we can borrow the world from different languages. But when you borrow the world, we borrow only the noun words. We don't borrow the bar words. So maybe if you borrow the bar words, what's going to happen? It has to form into Nepal Vasa way. For example, typing yai, film sway. So film is a noun. Typing is a noun. It form into gerund form. So typing yai, film sway, uh, microphone, uh, telephones yai. So I mean, you don't you don't call that. Uh, Telephone is a pagan. Uh, let's see, what is it called? Pagan? Pagan. Something like that. You know, dude, uh, so in India, people started calling that the television is a dude darshan, right? 
So if you use the word Doordarshan into directly into Nepal Vasa, nobody will understand that. Nobody understand if you translate the television into uh, Doordarshan and Doordarshan into Nepal Vasa or Doordarshan. So we just start saying the TV sway. TV sway, these are the words we already, you know, come. so make it more common way. But the sentence has to be in Nepal Vasa. If you use the word, the verbs needs to be in Nepal Vasa so that the sentence become a Nepal Vasa. But borrowing the word from the different languages, it is very common in most of the language, the dominant language always. We always borrow the word from dominant language. So this is how the language works. My next sentence is uh, Chia Pasa gonna do. So now Chia is word is very common in Nepali and also in different other languages, like also in uh, maybe uh, Chai in Hindi. Pasa gonna do. So Chia Pasa gonna do. Chita ganyago long ya. Chita ganyago long ya. Each sentence has a very, very embedded in a grammatical meaning. Chi ta, chi and ta are the two different you know, words. Ganyagu is two different words, two different, not a word actually is embedded, you know, grammatically embedded uh, sound is there. So gu has a different meaning, ganya as a one word, ganyagu, when you come together it becomes a, a one word, but it has a different you know, you know, meaning also. Gu brings uh, another meaning in that. Long ya, okay, ya is not just a ya. If it is just a ya, has no meaning, but it has to be ya, the long form of ya. And the last one, what I have in this uh, common questions I have put together is Chita Kofi Tone Yala. Now, how can we translate coffee into Newar language? Coffee is coffee, chia is chia, computer is computer, cell phone is cell phone. But you need to put it together Chita Kofi Tone Yala. So, la is a question word, question, uh, question particle, Tone Yala. So, would you like to drink coffee? So, those kind of synthesis. I think you got some basic sense of Nepal Vasa. Hopefully, from this now on, you will be able to uh, uh, understand. And it will. Be, you can you can hear this lecture on and on, on and on, often. So, if you want to, because it will be uh, put in the YouTube for rest of the time. I don't want to say rest of the life, but it might be modified. But it will be produced in um, a CD or in a DVD so that you'll be able to listen again and again and then go into the page by page in a book and also you will understand that. So, uh, Pramesh Ji, is there anything I need to cover? This is what I prepared Absolutely. for today. So, if you have some interest, I mean, how much time we have right now? Are we on the right time? Absolutely. Or we yeah, we already, yeah, we already passed the one hour. So, oh, I really... Uh, okay, I wasn't thinking yeah, that so I'll be passing an hour, sir. Uh, so I really appreciate the patience of our audience who has been, yes, really keen and who has been watching, right, your talk and the technique that you have used that is very, yes, for me, it is very interesting that you have started with the sentences, teaching some new language to the people that you started with the sentences saying that, and you said that you have some formulas, like first you listen, then produce, right? So these are the features yeah, that yeah. you have really yes went it. So right. uh, these are really I hope that these are the scientific way that you have been adopted and you have been so successful since 1992, uh, giving this kind of a lectures and uh, giving the yes the idea how to yes start the Nepal Basa language. So I uh, so the audience. Uh, so maybe you have a tons of questions. So you can just send us the questions, you can inbox us, or you can just send us on the YouTube, or you can use on the Facebook, right? You can inbox us, or you can also send email to us, and so that we can address and what do you think about this program. So it is July 8th, so we have just tried this, and uh, it's come to you, so give us a feedback. So you can just plan it accordingly. And uh, we'll see that, yes, uh, how we can go from here and how can we grow from here so that we can So please Sorry. add the last or uh, not list. So please spread out the word that once you are joining today on July 8th today, so please pass on the word to the other people so that they might be um, beneficial from this, uh, from this uh, you know, program, what we have just started. And then hopefully it will be spread out all over the world so that people who are interested to learn not only the Dewar people because the using I'm using the English language, 
to spread out the world. If it is I focus on different languages or like a Nepali or Newar language, but only it will be limited people will get benefits. So I'm using English language to teach Nepalwasa. Isn't that something, you know, unique probably? Because uh, this is what I wanted to do. It. This is what I wanted to spread out that how important it is. And once we are not able to learn this language, definitely this is going to be disappear from the world. And then it will be a sad story for us to tell our generation to come so that our ancestors used to speak the language and that I don't want to hear that kind of thing in the future. My ancestor also needs to continue to learn this language and also to speak this language. Thank you very much for today. So hopefully I'll see you again on July 22nd for a second episode. And there will be a different topic on each episode. Hopefully you are benefited from this topic. And Joselopa, and see you again in two weeks from now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Subhai. Thank you, Mr. Sakya. So the audience, uh, so please send us the feedback as usual. So EW is the platform, right, where we can just uh, we can just talk in different ways and uh, different aspects of the Newa civilization. So we have been trying our best to just yes, give you some of the lessons on the on this Nepal Vasa. So we just started, and uh, let's see how it goes. And yes. Your participation is really, really important for us. And uh, please give us a feedback. So by saying that, so I would like to say, Bye-bye.